Okay, let's start. The first task you have is I want you all, every one of you, to think of a whale, a top hat, and a cigar. Okay, you done that? You got it? A whale, a top hat, and a cigar. Okay, Alan, what, what, what are you thinking of? Can you describe what, 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 what you're in? No. Uh, you, nothing came to mind? I, I, can, I can picture, uh, you know, I'm trying to picture a whale with the... Yeah, what did you picture? What, what, do you have a, does anyone have a picture? Yes, well, what's your picture? Yeah, okay. He says, whale well, wearing a top hat smoking a cigar. How many, how many got that image? Okay. Almost everyone except Alan. Okay. <laughs> Rejoice. You're different. Okay. You're unique. Uh, okay. Um, now, I didn't tell you what to do with that, way, that top hat or cigar, right? Or the whale. But you automatically... You couldn't help it, it was automatic. You did something, you, you put it together, you tried to, and we're always make, trying to make meaning out of everything. And we get much less than we think we're getting from the outside world, and so we have to supplement it. And already, you've got almost the whole secret of cold reading, okay? But uh, we'll go further. But the next thing I want to talk, talk about is the, uh, I told you about the title, so we don't have to worry about that, that, um, uh, the manual. Um, the reason for the manual is that we won't cover everything, but I try to put everything that I think is that you need to know about cold reading, in fact, more than you need to know about cold reading in this thing here. So it's as complete as I can make it. And if you not want to go further, I give you an annotated bibliography here. And the annotated bibliography is more than just a bibliography. I put more stuff in there. Read, read what I have to say about some of this stuff there. Okay. It's somewhat redundant, but redundancy is not bad because you want to learn. You want to take it all at once. Uh, and so that's what this. Oh, the other thing I want to say about this. I first, I tell you how, how I developed this originally. I've only, I've done, I did my first workshop on cold reading in 1994, or 92, I think it was, in Oostend, uh, Belgium. And uh, for some reason, most of my cold work, reading workshops are in, foreign countries, and uh, fortunately, the ones who come to the workshop can speak English. Uh, but I think I've done, I don't know, maybe a dozen, maybe 20 workshops over that time since then. I don't do them very often, but I do them frequently and intimately. And um, each time I do it, I write, I expand this thing, I tweak it. And so for this one, I tweaked it some more. I do make a mistake once in a while because I do tweak it. I do add and re rewrite some parts of it. Uh, so I did make, I want to just point out one mistake uh, that's a little bit important for me, not, I mean, not for you. On page uh, two, three, the third paragraph, I give the dates. I subsequently updated the syllabus for the workshops that I conducted in Rostov, Germany, in May 1999. And then I say, and that I conducted in Rostov and Ghent, Belgium, in. And I'd say May 1999 again. That's a mistake. It, that, that was August 2003. That's, that's the only thing I want to change. Okay, so now you won't be misled. We can go on. Um, next thing I want to do is I want to... Okay, let, let's give me the agenda, what I'd like to accomplish. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some TV clips of, uh, of, of some readings, uh, and uh, we'll have a comment. They'll give us at least a start. And then we're going to get to the centerpiece of this workshop, because I said it is a workshop, hopefully also a play shop. Maybe I, I like to call it a play shop, maybe. But anyway, and this is going to be taking some, as I said, I've never had more than 40 people at once, and usually it's 20 people in a workshop, and I think we've got a little bit more than 20 here, the way it looks to me. Uh, so I need your help. I have no idea how we're going to coordinate this, but what I'm going to do is I pair you all, I, I get you all in pairs, and each pair, I, have, I, I guide you through how to scan each other, how to look at each other, 
and then I have you each, each member of the pair gives each other a reading, okay? And that's going to be a centerpiece. It'll probably take us an hour uh, or so, but it's the most important part of it because I want to show you that you too can read. All you two, everyone can do a give a reading. It is, there's nothing to it. You just bravado a little bit, a little bit of confidence. And the best, biggest secret, I give 10 secrets. You know, I can give 100 secrets, but I give 10 secrets in here. And uh, the first secret, I think, is just do it. Uh, and uh, the more you do it, the better you're going to be. The, uh, okay, so that's the first two items I hope we covered. That covered, going to cover a lot of the workshop by then. Uh, then I want to talk, give you a few tips on how to go beyond what you just did to enhance your reading. That is, like, things like what to do before the reading. I call it setting the stage. Um, defining the situation. That could be as important as what you do in the reading itself. So you're setting the person up so that they are going to cooperate with you. They want it to succeed. By the way, most of the time in the real world, when people are getting readings, the people who come are people who believe that this person is going to be able to help them. They're looking for, they have problems. What you're going to see on television and me doing stuff and stuff like that, we're dealing with people selected out of the audience who don't give a damn one way or the other. And so it's a little bit different. But yet it still works in those people too. So they keep that in mind. Um, Okay, so I'm going to give you some tips on how to enhance it and what you do during your reading, how, how to have a script and how to structure it, how to get feedback from those people without obviously asking them questions, how to say something which is a question which, which gets them to answer without actually ask, asking them questions. And then we'll get into the most important part, why I think it's important for skeptics to understand this. By the way, I hope you all are going to be nice people and not go out there and try to make a living at this uh, and, and, take away, and take away the living from uh, other people who are out there already doing it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we get into why it works. That's the most important part for a skeptic. And I think of the cold reading, to me, it's a microcosm of everything we're interested in. If you understand what goes on in the cold reading, you understand why it is that smart people can be fooled why they can look so stupid when they're smart, okay? That's the title of a book that I was, wrote a chapter in called Why Smart People Can Be So Stupid. And the editor of the book, he asked me to read all the chapters and write an overarching chapter. And so my chapter's in here, uh, in here and I, I put together all what they had to say and uh, tell them and, and explain why all the other authors are wrong and I have the right answer, okay? <laughs> Uh, anyway, then I want to, if we have time, I want to get a little bit into channelers and mediums. Uh, some people say they do cold reading. Ed John Edwards is doing cold reading and stuff like that. Well, yes, but in a minimalist fashion. Actually, they, don't, they have no technique at all. They don't need it. They have a very simple technique. You can use basic, the old-fashioned basic language or write a computer program in a few steps to do what they do. So they're a little bit different, so I want to get into that a little bit, at least get, talk about why they're different. And if you don't have a conscience, you can do what they do, okay? Um, and then we'll have some final words, okay? So that's the agenda. Well, we have difficulty getting to it all. I got an extra hour from uh, DJ to run this because I complained. I, wow, I thought I was going to have only 20 people. Don't you have a limit to these workshops? How can you do a workshop with... Well, it looks like over 100, I bet, uh, people. And um, so to help compensate for that, he gave me an extra hour. I realize that many of you want to get to that uh, test tonight. That's gonna, they're going to do the test on uh, some sort of psychic or something like that, a claim psychic. And uh, that goes on at um, 7, what time? 7.30. And if we go to 7.15, you're going to have 15 minutes to get your dinner and with your wine and everything else, and then get to that thing. So uh, I will try and get to 6.30, but I'm going to need your help, okay? And if we, don't, uh, if we don't get through by 6.30, I will be willing to continue on for whatever for people want to stay here, but some of you may want to rush off to the uh, other thing. 
And fortunately, that the manual will help compensate for anything you might think you're missing or might, might have missed. All right, so now let's go to, uh, I hope I can get this going now, to some samples of readings, okay? And what I did was I took some old videos I had and I figured out, this was a good exercise for me, how to convert them, take extracts from them, put them on DVD, and I did it. Uh, so I got some here. Let's see if I can now get everything done here. See if I do this. Believe in it, are wasting their time and wasting their money. Ray Hyman is an international authority on astrology. Robin Armstrong is a professional astrologer. Bob Garrison also studies the stars, but he's not an astrologer. He's actually an astronomer. Mark Pecora is an astrologer who casts the charts for the powerful and famous. And David Gower has been the editor of an astrology magazine as well as an astrology column. So we have a fantastic panel here for you and we're going to start off uh, t we're going to meet some people because uh, let me begin to, by telling you that we're, that with Ray and Robin now, Ray and Robin have are different they all have different styles astrologers some are kind of on the spot there you go I've got it for you and people like Robin take hours and hours pouring over charts you know so they can tell us what they have to tell us so we have chosen in this audience a few people we gave you, Robin, some background information, not very much, but we'll begin with Ray, because you are on an on-the-spot kind of guy. Let me introduce you to our first person, okay? This is Janine Fawcett. Now, Hi, what do you need to know from Janine? When she was born? January 16, 1954. Do you know what time of day? Uh, it was between 5.30 and 6 a.m. Uh, January. Right. Okay. And... Um, Okay, where were you born? That's the only other thing I need to know. Uh, Keswick, Ontario. Okay, now, I, uh, I obviously haven't cast a horoscope or anything, and so I have to make some adjustments, and that's what I'm trying to do in my head, like a lightning calculator, in a sense, and trying to anticipate some things. First of all, you surprised me. You weren't what I expected uh, from the birth date. I would have predicted quite a different one, so I'll be honest with you. Uh, what I do get is... Um, I get this feeling that there's two separate things going on within you from, from my, my anticipation. Two separate things in a sense. Uh, you are trying to deal, you basically are a conservative person. Uh, you basically uh, would like to be oriented towards and acknowledge your maternal, nurturant, um, uh, even feminine aspect. On the other hand, uh, you're in a different world today. It's a world where there's a challenges there, and the challenges are to uh, be something else. To okay, let, let me stop you there and, and ask you, Janine, how accurate Ray has been so far. Oh, he's pretty accurate. Really? Well, good, good stuff. Okay, let's, let, let me go on now to Ron. And uh, Ron, if I could just ask you to sit down for a moment, Janine. Okay, now, this is Ron, and uh, what do you need to know? Same, Same thing, birth, when he was born? November 5th, 1969. Okay. And I was born in Ottawa, Ontario. Ottawa, Ontario. Do you know what time of day you were born? Uh, between 6 and 7 a.m. in the morning. Okay, you do fit a little bit. Uh, um, the term, term that comes to me is rebel. I don't know if you remember the movie Rebel Without a Cause. Yeah, I've heard of it. I'm a film student. Okay, good. <laughs> you know about Dean, okay? And the reason it occurs to me is, is in a sense that I get the impression that your problem is, your problem was, and maybe still is, that... Uh, how to cope with your parents. Uh, very early on, there was this constraints, and you were, you were chafing at the constraints with your parents. Um, Is that true? Well, maybe when I was really young. Yeah, okay. Under six, I think. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the, the real problem for you now is uh, career-wise, unfortunately, you did tell me your career, but uh, for you, uh, maybe it's a, it's a good career that you're choosing. I would have anticipated that uh, your problem today would be uh, whether to settle in in a conventional type of career and stay with it or whether to be what is in your nature to be on the outside and challenging and questioning what is going on there okay now how is he doing close I'm I'm thinking a lot now a lot of thinking so that's not bad, Ray. Okay, because this is on the spot, you know, with that, what did you say, that lightning calculator in your head? 
All right, let's go on to our third person. This is Kevin. Kevin? Okay. I was born on March 5th, 1969, in Cornwall, Ontario. Uh-huh. Okay, uh, you don't fit at all. I get two different impressions. And if I were casting your horoscope, I'm sure, or if Robin had cast your horoscope, we would find that um, uh, various aspects just don't match your sun sign at all. For one thing, uh, intuitive is what I get. And that shouldn't be what I should get for you. But you're an intuitive person. There's no question about it. And the other thing I get is that um, you have feelings, uh, sensations that you don't know how to acknowledge. You don't know what they mean. But you're looking for meaning for them. And the meaning you're looking for them is, I would say, in a spiritual meditative sense. Okay, let me stop you there. Is he close? I'm not sure what he means by the me meditation part. Like... Uh I'm, I'm thinking that you're thinking of developing your, your uh, finding out what these feelings are by, by going into something like meditation or studying some sort of spiritual growth or development. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> you blew it, Ray. I didn't blow it because uh, I'm just telling you what the tendencies are. So, the, so uh, you have no tendencies towards that reincarnation, channeling. Are you interested in any of that kind of thing? Uh, no. I okay. don't sit at home and, oh, um, you know, I don't do that. <laughs> okay. But you know what? That's not bad. Did he have anything right about you? Uh, probably. Are you, are you an intuitive sort of person? I'd say so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, Robin, um, there were three people who we, we sent you uh, some ba very basic information about birth dates, time of time, uh, where they were born, and, and their gender, mm -hmm. male or female. And, and we have them here. And, and you're, you've poured over your charts for hours at a stretch deciding well with these we didn't have time but hours of a stretch oh to get God. it together we, i ran off the charts before i came so i had a chance to look at it before okay we let me here. make sure no we want teresa first where's teresa okay let's get teresa all right teresa robin what do you have for her you're january 4th january 4th. 1956 okay you're a capricorn you have a libra moon and libra rising capricorns the serious somewhat ambitious somewhat strategic sign who likes to accomplish something and wants at least respect but the libra part is the very sweet pleasant person who wants everything nice <laughs> so you can't stand when things get hassled this last couple of years two or three years have been the craziest most disruptive disoriented upsetting neurotic crazy few years in your life is this true yeah and you're just exactly. start you're just starting to get a vision or a sense of breaking free and leaving some of this behind and opening your doors just this past month or two I hope so. <laughs> this, this, this year is a year, where I would call it a catalytic year, where you're ready for change, you're ready to break through the old structures and get going. So I'm saying, don't look back. Okay, good luck. All right, now where's Sorelli? I, had to, I stopped it because I don't want to take up too much time with that. But uh, if you're interested in that astrologer, he did, did two more, and it was about like, like what he got there. Um, I think the people in the audience there thought it was a tie between us, you know, in terms of how each of us did. And um, then she revealed that I'm a fake. I'm not a real astrologer. And the discussion goes on because he gets very upset and says, well, he doesn't d deny that I was as accurate as he was, but he was doing it legitimately. <laughs> and I was unethical because I was faking it, okay? But he didn't, he, he didn't deny the fact that we both equally as good. Um, by the way, this, as you could tell, took place in Toronto. Uh, Okay, so let me go to the next one. Leon, Christian's here with the tarot cards. If you want Christian to have a look at the future, 071-603-1152. So get dialing now for that. Okay, well, the phones are buzzing, and Florence is in Ilford. Um, as we pick out the cards, there's, t there's two things, particularly going back... Ray Hyman is on the executive council of Psychop. He's listening to tapes of English psychic Christian Dion's radio talk show, sent to him in America by a British associate. In the show, Dion questions callers and gives them psychic readings and advice. London Talkback Radio. Hyman came over to London to investigate. Hi, Avon. All right. How are you? Fine. Shuffling going on? Shuffle the rounds, yeah. yeah I, well, I think people don't actually believe it. I shuffle them all the time and change them around, but we do, kids. We do. Certainly do. Um, what? Over the, over the last sort of basically 12 years, it's been a bit of a dodgy patch, Yvonne. That's all right. And I feel that you have also been, um, been draining yourself a lot recently. Mm. You've been getting yourself all wound up. Yeah. Very, very much so. And if, without being rude, you've lost your sparkle. That's all right. You know, it's like you're not you at the minute. It's the, some, you, you, we need to get your sparkle back. I think that will 
be better as we go into the old. It's a bit like being able to view a videotape of someone's life. You can see the past, the present time, the future time, which gives them evidence, if you want, that you, things you're predicting for the future are good, or at least accurate. Right. Is there anything particularly you wanted to find out about? It just helps him pick up on things. Right, stay on the line, we're with you soon. If you can just make sure your radio's turned off, you'll hear it down the line. Well, what do Dion's callers think? Is Yvonne from Acton convinced of his psychic powers? Yvonne, you just had a consultation with Christian Dion. What do you think of Christian? I thought he was good. It was right what he said to me. What were some of the things that he said? That well, he said there was ups and downs in the last 12 years, and um, in the last two, and also that I tend to put everybody else before myself, and I've lost my sparkle. You know, that was all. And he said about a property deal, which I take it he means moving between now and Easter next year. Is that something you have, have been thinking well, about? Well, we have, yeah. Um, and he seems to think that it will happen. She's just one person. And many, many thousands of people are seem to be just as convinced as she is. And the sad thing is that there are alternative explanations. Today on News Radio Back in Buffalo, Hyman is going to show how to read people's minds without psychic powers. 24 minutes after 10 o'clock, my guest in studio, Mr. X, a psychic reader, a gentleman who is able to tell you many things intuitively about yourself uh, through the use of his ability to focus in on your psychic energy and also with the use of tarot cards, which he has in front of them now. Good morning, Julie. Good morning. How are you? Fine, thank you. And you? Good. You sound very chipper and very happy. So <laughs> uh, I also see that you've had um, probably some daydreams only. It's a just really fantasy daydream type of thing uh, where you you even thought of maybe running away once in a while and maybe even starting life anew with a new relationship and so on. But that's just because of this problem of as you begin to think of uh, the youth that's now slipping by and facing the future. Oh, good. And that, mm. that part of it's taken care of. Well, that was remarkably accurate. I, I compliment you on that. Thank, Thank you. you now. Bye-bye. Cold reading well, is when we you a meet a client right whom you've right never right met right. before. We call it meeting them cold. And give them a reading that is insightful and the client thinks is gets to the core of his or her personality. And the way this is achieved in a nutshell, is to give the client general statements that could apply to anyone, but then you gradually refine them by the feedback you get from the client. And once you get this feedback and refine it, you make sure that the message, whole message is wrapped up with this uh, rule. The basic rule is you tell them what they want to hear. Now let me give you an example of what is like a cold reading. Let me show you what Christian Dion was doing, just this little sample from him. ...this year to Easter of next year, before you're able to get the property matter completely organized. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean to say it's going to take the whole of that time, it's in that time. That what, what, did you say property matters? Property matters. What do you mean by that? Well, because around you property-wise, it's as though there's no settlement at the moment. Yeah. He's talking about this property matter, and he, he said it's not necessarily that during that time, but in this time, which actually, if you think about it, covers quite an, a big range, There's a group, big range of things there. The next five-year block... You could break down his whole approach to a simple formula, which I think would be very easy to write on a computer. And the reason you can do this, by the way, is that it's not Christian Dion who, who makes these readings so successful. It's the people who are listening. They are putting the meaning in there. I haven't actually got a partner. At all? Um, no, not, not in that way, no. And I'm talking romantically, obviously. No. Right. At no. all? No, nobody. All not right. romantically, no. All right, well, let that one ride. I couldn't agree with them more in the saying that anybody can do what I do, because we all have the power. It's just that they haven't, A, got the uh, logic, if they want to use that word, to see that we don't tell them general things anyway. When people come for readings, very specific things. And if uh, I was telling people general things, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing because people wouldn't come and see me. So the skeptics have got the problem, not myself. About 97% is my estimation of people who do psychic readings believe in what they're doing. Even though, if you listen to them over and over again, they have a very simple form, they're very repetitive. Do you want to take an honest answer? Yeah. I think they're thick. 
I honestly think they are thick. I mean, do you think it's some, they feel a challenge to their personal belief systems? I think they, systems? well, maybe they have a challenge to the belief systems as we all have, but I think they're basically inadequate and they are thick. You have the complete transcript of his reading of, of Yvonne, I think, in there, and um, you have my analysis of it. I, I actually was, um, they flew me to England and uh, they gave me, I still have them, 18 audio cassettes of his programs. He was at that time, he's still on the, on the web, he's a big deal. He, by the way, he comes into the, he drove, he, he's driven by a chauffeur to the, to the London LBC when I was there. He comes in with a Rolls Royce, actually it was a Bentley, and uh, he, he comes out and he's wearing pantaloons like something from out of, silk pantaloons, like something from out of the uh, Arabian Nights, thank you. Uh, and uh, he's really something. Uh, but um, anyway, I, I was able to listen to, they gave me a nice apartment, I had right near the Thames, at one stop from Wimbledon, I was able to jog along, along the, uh, I was there for almost a week in, in London. And they um, uh, gave me those 18 cassettes of, they said whenever he's on an LBC, he's on two hours every week at that time, that was, we're talking about 19, 90, I guess, and uh, he said almost all London calls in and listens, apparently. So he, he was a big thing there. Uh, so I listened to them, and when you listen to them, uh, about, uh, after I got through about the five, five or six hours, I could, I had, and I did, I wrote a form, and what I was doing on the radio in Buffalo was uh, using the formula that I, I, I could, I don't know whether he was consciously using that formula, but I used the formula. And I, I give it to you in the, in the manual, so if you want to be a, do it, go on LBC radio and take over, uh, you can do it reading the manual, okay? Uh, what else can I say about, well, let's go on to another one. Uh, I want to get through a few of these. Recently, I was asked to give a class of college freshmen a chance to evaluate one of the oldest systems of fortune telling, astrology. Well, you know, I started life as a, as a magician. I still am a magician, I guess. I think it's in the DNA, I'm not too sure. But uh, I'm an actor playing the part of a wizard. I know how people are deceived. I know how they deceive themselves. And many magicians, most magicians, really allow people to deceive themselves. Would you like to see me fool you? Who's wearing a wristwatch here, a regular, ordinary wristwatch? <laughs> mm. You've been a good girl, haven't you? Yes. That's a Seiko. I thought it was a Rolex for a minute. Oh, well. <laughs> now, what time does it say on your watch? It says nine minutes before three, and it says it's the 2nd of October, right? Very good. Open up your hand for me, flat like that. The clean one. She almost changed, you know that? Almost changed. Now, I'm going to put the watch face down your head. Put your finger of your other hand on the back of the watch, okay? There we good. Now. My watch says nine minutes to three, so we disagree slightly, but not enough for any never mind. Okay, watch what happens now. I'm really concentrating now. Oh, I think I hurt myself. <laughs> Don't laugh, this is science. Let me see now, holding it only by this. Oh, would you tell the folks what time it says on your watch now, please? <laughs> it says 3.40. But 3.40, how time flies when you're having fun. Isn't that wonderful? Now, no. let me show you something. This is such a little tiny itty bitty watch. Here, hold it tightly in your hand. Don't lose. Oh, my oh. goodness. <laughs> uh, uh, what happened? Oh, the gentleman was carrying it over here behind his waist and he didn't even know it. There you go. Wait, you wait, have your do watch. It again. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> the trickster never works alone. It did happen. His audience assists him. If he does his job well, they want to be fooled. Uh, Sherla? Would you pass that back? Wendy? Let's For the astrology go. test, each student was given a detailed horoscope. Robin? Could you pass it over to Robin? They were told it was drawn up by a professional based on information they had supplied about when and where they were born. Actually, these horoscopes were not quite what they appeared to be. I'd like you to share something with me, if you'd be so kind, just with a show of... I asked the students to grade them for accuracy on a scale of one to five, five being the most accurate. Uh, how many gave it a one? Let's see a show of hands. Two? 
three, four, and five. Okay, so we scored pretty highly with this then. Let's do a little experiment. You've got your horoscopes right in front of you. Take them in your hand like this and hand them over your shoulder to the person behind you. Okay, everybody, and the guy at the end down there, you'll have to come up to the front because these people in the front don't have one now. Okay, everybody change them around. Everybody's got a horoscope. Open up somebody else's horoscope and read it carefully, please. <laughs> they had all received the same horoscope. The personality descriptions were generally true of everyone, like recently you have had to recover from a disappointment. Some of them seem specific because they were so personal. Your sexual adjustment has presented some problems for you. And there were others that anyone might hope would be true. You have a great deal of unused capacity. People like to believe certain things are true. And they like to fall for very specific, absolutely, enormously accurate horoscopes, right? Right. Of course they are. Did you have a question? Yes, I have a question. So why do people persist in uh, ascribing to these systems? That's the big question, of course. And psychologically, that is the most interesting question. I think that people are trying to get some control over their lives. By knowing more about themselves, of course, they get control over their lives. But that's what we're doing, all of us, each and every day of our lives. Whether it's financial, whether it's emotional, whether it's a love interest, whether it's health, we're trying to get control of our lives. We're looking for power. And astrology offers you apparently a very old and a very easy formula whereby you can do that sort of thing. What you've presented me today is evidence that this can be misused or abused, but you have not convinced me that there is nothing to this. Oh, no, no, I didn't intend to do that. Okay, and, and I feel that your exercise today was kind of cynical and one-sided, and somehow it is wise to be um, unbelieving in this. Well, situation. I can't prove it doesn't work. And, I can never prove it doesn't work. And I've work. seen it a lot of times where intellectuals have, had, have wanted to disprove mystical things because since it didn't fit into their framework of beliefs, That's they, true. they wouldn't allow it. But I can't prove to you that Santa Claus doesn't exist. I really can't. I can't disprove anything. I can't prove a negative. But I can show you that it's not very likely to be true. That's the best I can do. Needless to say, my message isn't always popular. My friend Ray Hyman is a psychologist, and he has an idea why. We seem to be uh, taken as we're taking something away and not giving something yes. in return. Yes. And these people want something, they're looking for something, and I think we have to understand what is it they're searching for and what they're seeking. And Ray has an insider's perspective on these questions. He once worked as a professional palm reader. On a recent visit to Florida, he allowed me to observe while he gave readings to two volunteers. Now, I want to look at a few other things before we go very far. I look at your thumb, which is the most important. Ray started reading palms to help put himself through college. There's a little narrowing of the second joint here. That's, that's tact. That suggests tactfulness. At the time, he was convinced there was nothing to it. Uh, this is the spiritual mental. I had no belief that it would work. But to be convincing, I did read the books, and I did study the lines the way, and told it as it's supposed to be told. And to my surprise, it worked. And then it became a very rabid believer in palm reading. There is a break in your lifeline. This is your lifeline right here. So you've had some physical problems. You still may have some problems here, some medical problems of some sort. You he was right about that, that I had had some health problems. Is there anything there about my mother? About your mother. Uh, the one thing, the, the, the thing that's clear is that uh, right from the beginning, uh, you didn't want to be dominated by her. You want to make up your own mind about what your life is going to be like and so on. I have been very uh, headstrong when it comes to my mother. She has kind of tried to dominate me sometimes, and I've rebelled against it. At the same time, you wanted to be, you wanted to be on your own terms and stuff like that. He was pretty right on the money with a lot of things. 
Maybe he's got some part to himself that others are not in touch with, and he knows yeah. these things. I'm concerned about the relationship between your mother and yourself. As a palm reader, Ray was yeah. quite successful. I was saying... Then a college friend I bet him that he would do just as well if he told his subjects the opposite sure, nice. of what he read in their palms. He decided to give it a try. Is that... And I did this on my first client, and she didn't say a word. She had no reaction at all, which was very spooky to me, because I'm used to feedback. Um, I thought it was because I bombed. But it turned out because she was so stunned, I was so accurate. And this was really a shock to me, because I had done everything wrong. So I did it the next client wrong. Then I realized it doesn't make any difference what you tell them. It's more what you convince them, how good you are, and what you get them to believe. As, to what As a professional psychologist, Ray is very much aware of the role that careful observation can play in a reading. You're living in a strange world. Uh, you'd be better if you're living maybe 50, 40 years ago in some ways. <laughs> I've always said that. I should have been born a long time ago. This pr present world is, is presents problems for you, and you're not too happy with it. You'd be much and from the way she was dressed and so on, I could say that she'd rather be living in, in an earlier time than today. In fact, she was dressed for an earlier time anyway. There's a change. There has been, uh, there for a while, looked like you had two jobs or two careers. I'm not sure. And uh, very recently, you have switched. In fact, there's been a major career change. Um, I've been in the same career for six years. Next year, I'm thinking about changing careers, but I haven't done it yet, so he could just be a little off in his timing. If you set people up right, you can tell them most anything. If they really got a creative and intelligent mind, they can make sense out of it, no matter how crazy it seems to be. They can find a way of, of, of reinterpreting it so that it really fits them like a glove. This person wants me to succeed. I should work out some accommodation. She doesn't know it, but the reader, who's a University of Oregon psychology professor, says palm reading is pure fiction. And Diana doesn't believe in it herself. That's my home. But something strange is about to happen. Diana is going to become a believer. You have a hard time hanging on to money. You have uh, spaces between your fingers. Oh. And Ray Hyman gently raises Tommy common topics like money or career on the lookout for giveaway anyway, responses, a nod here or a word there. Counting. Let other people do your income tax. Okay. Uh, otherwise, do. Uh, you do. Okay, do. good. Uh, the fate line comes very late, very, very late out of your lifeline. And that suggests your career is very, very late in coming. This is children, you know, and lots of them are there. Mm. After about 20 minutes, Ray is feeding back to Diana what he's gathered she probably wants to hear. Six. Jeez, I better hurry. How accurate was it? Uh, pretty accurate. Really? Yeah. The uh, career, um, about four years ago, I started selling insurance and have just now decided that it's really not what I want to do. Kids, of course, I have one child, but my mother has five. My sister has five. So now Diana thinks three. there might be something to and this. I think I was really meant to have more children, but I never married young. And then uh, when he said accounting and stuff, he's right. I, I'm not a bookkeeper. I don't want to be. And I let other people handle my taxes and, and everything. She and I are working as a team. Yeah. Uh, we, I call it a symbiotic relationship. She wants me to be right because right. you know, it could help her. Mm -hmm. And of course, I want to be right because it's an ego trip for me as a reader. Uh, and so we're helping each other. So was there a point during this where you said to yourself, oh, this guy ha has some ability? Yes. Now what about now, now that you know that he doesn't believe in it, that he's just reading what you told him, how do you feel about the future? How do you feel about the things he told you about the future? Well, uh, pretty much the same. I accept that I'm going to, uh, it's nice to know that I have a big strong marriage line there. This is really interesting. You're thinking about the things he told you and you're considering them and you're reconsidering <laughs> your life in a way, even though uh, he, he, Doesn't it was like a, a put up job. I think that I was taking the stuff that I believe uh, I want to happen to be true. Most of us look at the world in the same way as Diana. We pick the bits of a horoscope we like and read them into the stars. We want to believe we're in touch with the forces of nature through extrasensory perception. 
Oh. That's all I'm going to show you for now. We're going to now get into you doing the readings. But any comments or observations on these readings? Anything you got to say about it? I think so, yeah, that's what I said, and I have no way of, of objectively verifying it, but that's my impression, yes. Okay. Yeah, but thank you for calling, for being a good skeptic and, and calling, my, calling attention to the fact that I don't have any evidence for that other than my own experience, okay? That's a good question. Yes? A victim's? <laughs> Okay, I, that's a good question. He's asking, am I able to uh, pick up things? And that's, uh, let me say this about all those readings you saw me doing. First of all, you gotta think about public versus private, okay? Uh, most readings in the real world are done for clients who have real problems, who tend to, or want to believe in this, and it's done in private. So you're working just with them. When I'm up there on the TV, uh, on the on the TV program stuff like that, that's public. And actually, even John Edward and and the people, the the, the people taking calls and over the public the airways, they're not so much concerned about that person asking a question, but they're tr concerned about everyone else watching. So it's a little bit different uh, dynamic there. But still, the underlying forces that, for example, the people that. I'm dealing with on TV and stuff like that, usually they're unselected, they're probably skeptics, or they don't believe this, they've never, been, never had a reading before. And that's different from when I was doing it for money, when I was uh, working mostly during my high school years and when I was going to college, I would work in charity bazaars. Our, uh, our churches would sometimes have fairs and they'd have booths around there. And I'd get paid a fixed amount of money and anything over that would go to the charity. We had some arrangement like that. Uh, so, anyway, under these conditions, people are selected. I don't know who I'm going to get. The people are picked at random, and you pick people at random, you don't know what you're going to get. Yet it works. I want you to also pay attention. Notice that if you watch me, it looks like I'm not doing anything. I do get, uh, in fact, I'm not doing much. I get a glance at there. I notice right away that that two, two, both cases on the Shirley Show, and the First Lady. I did the uh, reading for on the Randy Show. Um, I noticed that they were dressed for a different age. <laughs> when I was on Fort Lauderdale, uh, at the time I went there, that was just after Hurricane Andrew. It was a year after almost, but you can see, still see all the uh, devastation of. Hung, Hurricane Andrew still around there, and, but yet everywhere else for me, coming from Eugene, Oregon, uh, which is not a backward place, but still, in Florida, these people were dressed far out, you know, and tattoos everywhere, and, uh, and you know, and this, in comes this lady uh, who's dressed like she belongs to the Victorian era, right? What else can I say? Uh, that was a, too easy, and I, I felt embarrassed for getting credit for that. Um, but I get an overall glance. I have some others to show you, but just the first impression I get, I can see from the way they're dressed and stuff like that, that gives me a, a clue. And then I just go ahead and read for, the, for that. I, I'm not using any, any, I do get feedback, by the way. When I'm reading palms, I love it because when I'm, I'm holding their hand and when I'm telling them things they want to hear, they're pushing them ever so slightly, their hands towards me. I'm telling you things they don't like or they, wish I weren't telling them, they're pulling their hands back. Very ever so slightly. And that tells me a lot. It's as if, when I'm doing the reading, those people are helping shape the reading with their hands. And so, I, yes, I'm getting a lot of feedback that way. That's why I love palm reading, as opposed to astrology and tarot cards and like that, because you get that direct feedback that way. Any other comments? Yes. I'm sorry, I still can't hear you. Okay, he says, do I pick up any information from calluses on their hand, like Sherlock Holmes, right? Uh, who, uh, 
a, you know, a typical uh, Sherlock Holmes, he can see someone and from the calluses on their hands, something else, he now tells you their whole profession, what instrument they play, and uh, how, how many uh, uh, beers they had this morning. Uh, that's overdone. That's oversold. Uh, you, you, can, you do get information from, and that, that's what I'm going to have to teach you right now. We're going to break up and peer, and, we, and that's our next exercise. That's what we're going to do. But you do get information from people. You see them, and uh, I'll tell you how to get it a little bit. But I just get one glance. I just use a little bit, and then I just go. And I wasn't using feedback. I wasn't using a lot of the things I'm going to teach you in the manual because I only have a little bit of time, and it doesn't make much difference anyway. I, 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 uh, you know, I was thinking as I was coming down here, uh, you know, I've been doing it, you know, I'm, uh, I'm 84 years old now, and I did my first palm reading when I was probably 15, okay? So I've done a lot of palms, uh, and I've done a lot of readings, and I'm saying, did I ever fail? Now, cushion feel is an interesting thing. And the only thing I can remember, I can remember one failure in all those years, and I just, it's countless number of people, I, poems I've read. So it's easy for me to now get up there on television, and she says, you're the on the spot kind of guy. I, didn't, I walked into that place there. I flew into Toronto for that program. I didn't know what was going to go on. She drags me onto the thing. I didn't know it was what it was astrology was involved in. She says, can you do like an astrologer? I said, sure, okay. <laughs> And then she sat me down there, and I, just a few minutes after I arrived, I was on that program sitting there, and she picks up someone, and I'm, i got to go with it. I just, let it. I just let it hang out and did it, okay? And it worked. Um, so I, you know, so you get, you'll get, if you, you'll get like that too, you'll get used to it, but it's a matter of just doing it. I've done so much of it. And I said, only one failure. Well, let me tell you the story of my failure. I think it's worth it. Uh, does anyone know and uh, ever hear of a uh, woman called Willie Werby? It's her name, Willie Werby. Anyone hear from that? Okay, well, some years ago, she had a, it's a strange name, but she had her own independent TV production company. And she and her daughter and maybe some of the other family worked on it. And she, what she did was she make independent uh, documentaries. And then after she made it, she tried to sell it to PBS or other places like that. And she really was pretty successful. But she had this idea, and that's why she contacted me. Her idea was she was going to get five well-known psychics in the, uh, uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area, and she was going to have them give a, a long reading, a half-hour reading is long reading, a half-hour reading to, to, uh, to this one lady. So this one lady is going to get five different psychics giving them a half-hour reading, and then she wanted me who's not a psychic, to also give her a reading for a half hour. And then, that was the premise of the thing, then she's going to have the lady pick who gave the best reading, okay? Now, I didn't win. Let me tell you why. Okay, let me tell you what happened. She flew me down. Now, I don't know. There's one woman being picked. I don't know what kind of woman she's going to pick. I'm going to San Francisco, and I have no idea what she, who she's going to pick or what this woman, where she comes from, any kind of possible background, any world context, what? But I'm going to have to give her a half hour reading, okay? And so I came, I was, I think I was the last one. They'd already done the five other psychics. Um, and so I go into the studio, there's a little platform stage, and the crew's all around there. Now, it turns out the TV crew knew this lady. They knew her background uh, completely. And this lady that I'm, I'm supposed to give the reading to, so the lady comes and sits down in a chair opposite me. I sit opposite her. I don't think I was reading poems. I think I just had, was supposed to just look at her and go. So I gave her a reading. She was, well, by the way, she was very well-dressed, but in San Francisco, uh, women are well-dressed. Uh, you know, expensively, I could tell. And she, hair was well done. She looked, she could have been 30s, maybe 40. Uh, very attractive, nice jewelry, good taste. You know, so, so I could tell, that that's what I could tell, you know, just looking at it that way. So I gave her a reading, and we, I went on for 15 minutes. It's a long time for me. Uh, but when I was doing private readings, that wasn't a long time. I would do an hour reading sometimes. But I went for 15 minutes, and then they uh, took an interruption because they had to change the tapes in their cameras. 
And during that interruption, Willie uh, came, came, took me aside and says, Ray, you're bombing. I said, what do you mean I'm bombing? I thought I was doing pretty good. She says, no, you're acting too much like a psychologist or a professional doctor or something like that, not like a psychic. And I said, yeah, I thought, actually, I deliberately was doing that because I thought, look, she's going to be seeing all these psychics. How can I be different from them? I'll act, I'll be like, I'm a psychologist, I'll act like a psychologist, okay, like a professional. Well, apparently, Willie said, that's wrong. So when she came back, I, I tried to now be woo-woo, okay, and be more fancy, you know, more, more like that, but it was too late, apparently, because they, uh, she picked as, a, as the best reading, best psychic for her, the first guy. The first guy apparently had been dressed completely in, came in blessed, in leather, black leather, completely from head to toe, and then he had amulets of all kinds all over him. And his hair was flaming red and, and something, you know, and uh, other colors and, uh, you know, sticking up every which way. And he was really out there, okay? Well, it turned out this lady that they picked, she was also, she was uh, into all these cults. And she was into all the uh, other world stuff. It turned out she had also uh, had a, uh, she was much older than we all thought, by the way. Uh, she had several um, uh, cosmetic surgeries and that kind of stuff. And on top of that, she was, um, uh, had been told, and she was very depressed about it, she'd been told that she could never have children. And this was a disturb. this was her main problem, actually. Now, it turned out I was the only one who knew all that and got it. I was right on every fact about her. The other, the psychic she picked, was wrong on everything. <laughs> it didn't make any difference because he was a psychic. He looked the part. He played the part. And even though he was wrong, she picked him as the best reading. Not the most accurate. The best, okay? So I wanted, so that's another, that was another lesson for me. That's the only time I ever failed. But I didn't fail because I was wrong, okay? I just didn't play the right part. Um, okay, I want to get this out of here, and we're going to get you uh, reading each other now. You can do I want to show you all, yet you can do it, okay? I don't want you to go and do it, but I'm going to show you you can do it. Uh, let me see if I can get my... How do I do this? Trying to get this, well, I'll get it out later. Okay, okay. that doesn't want to come out. Um, okay, here's what we're going to do. And uh, I'll keep my fingers crossed that we can do it. I need your cooperation. Uh, what I like to do is I like to pay, get every, every, everyone paired up. But I'd like people to pair up with someone they don't know, if possible, okay? Because it, it's better that way than if you know someone that's, that, that's not, 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 not as, as good. So see if you can get paired up. And let's see if we can do it more efficiently. Uh, so find a partner. What's that? We just start. We just start doing it, or you're gonna. No, don't do anything yet. Just when I'm on. Has everyone got a partner? Out of any anyone without a partner, but it's way it's possible, you know, because if we have an odd number of people here, there's going to be one person who's not partnered, right? At least that's the mathematical part of this. Uh, does anyone not have a partner? You don't have a partner. Does anyone? Oh, so there, let's see. So, what's that? You're a couple. You shouldn't partner with you, if you can. Okay, here's someone needs a partner over there. Who else needs a partner? Uh, over here. Okay. If you need a partner, stand up. 
Okay, anyone now still need uh, unpartnered? Is anyone who's unpartnered here? <laughs> we have three. We need one more. Three? Yeah, one of us needs a partner. One of you needs a partner, or you could be asked as a trio. Uh, <laughs> or they have to come up and deal with me, right? <laughs> okay, anyone? St any, okay, who else? Does anyone else unpartner now? Okay, but if, so everyone except. There's three of you. One of you come, can come up here if you want. Okay. I don't know how we'll do this, but... Okay, you can sit here. And... All right, now let, let, let me tell you what we're going to do. Uh, I want you so you hopefully you can face your partner, okay? We're going to do what I call a systematic scan. By the way, all, most of all the stuff we're doing is described in there and even... Uh, the scripts and other things. Uh, when, you do, when you do your reading, uh, you're going to find more things to do to enhance it from the manual. But what we're going to do now is a simple thing. We're looking for descriptors. When you come up with someone, you want to find just a few things that are descriptive of that person that, and we want to look for things that, uh, that, that makes that person look different in that aspect from everyone else. You really, the more so if someone is average on something you're looking at, you're looking at the hair, and the hair, there's nothing special about the hair, forget about it. Don't, don't worry about it. Just move on to the next thing, okay? So that's the first thing I'm going to have you do. First, look at the person's hair opposite you, okay? Look at the hair. Look at their hair, and see what comes to your mind. Does any word describe it? Is this the hair that's carelessly done? Is it overdone? Is it meticulous? Is it uh, colored? Uh, something? Anything it tells you is, is this... Uh, uh, is it out of style with what, the way the world is today? Uh, is it appropriate? Anything at all. If they don't have hair, that's, too, that's interesting too, okay? <laughs> so what you're doing, if you have, by the way, if you have a notebook and paper and pen, it, it helps if you want to write, write something down about that. But, if, but otherwise you have to, you have, when, ultimately when you get used to doing this, you, you don't need to write anything down. But if nothing comes to you, nothing stri striking comes to you as a descriptor of a person with this kind of hair, don't worry about it. That's the other thing. Don't, don't get hung up on anything. Don't worry. Uh, okay. Yes? Where are we actually beginning as, a, as opposed to in the manual? I'm sorry? Where in the manual are we? Where are we actually beginning if we were to follow... Oh, don't worry about the manual. Don't worry about don't, it? Don't worry. You're going to use the manual afterwards. But take, you, you go back, you can look at it, you find out, you remind yourself of things that happened here, but also going to learn other things as well, okay? Now, the manual is just for you to take out of here with you and continue your quest. I like that. Uh, okay. Okay, now, have you done that? Looked at the hair. Now look at the person's face. For anything, just see. Does anything unusual about it that makes that face stand out as different from others? If not, if it's just an average face that... Just an average face, forget about it. But anything that the face, look for acne, acne marks, you know, uh, that can maybe tell you something. Look for makeup. Is it, if there's no makeup, that's interesting. Uh, uh, also, if, if it's made up, there's makeup, is it over made up, is it, so on. Look for anything like that that tells you something, okay? See if you get any, dis and, uh, and uh, just, if nothing comes to mind from that, if that doesn't tell you anything, fine, that's okay. Don't worry. Don't sweat it, okay? This is supposed to be fun. Keep relaxed, okay? Uh, all right, now look at the person's clothes. Look, look, this, how are they dressed? Are they dressed appropriately for the occasion? Are they dressed overdressed for the occasion? Uh, is it stylish? Is there everything matching? Um, is it uh, sloppy? You know, whatever. Uh, and. What, what from those clothes, what can you tell? Does anything strike you? If not, fine too. Don't worry about it. Okay? Now, the next thing you do is look at the shoes. A uh, couple of things about shoes. First of all, are they shoes that are for comfort? Are they styled? Uh, are they, you know, any kind they use? Are they scuffed? Or, you know. But also, um, do they match? the rest of the clothing. Look at the socks if you can see them as well. If not, but just, you're looking for anything that strikes, that stands out if possible. 
There's nothing special about the shoes. They don't tell you anything. Don't worry about it. This, we're going to move on to something else, okay? Okay, now the next thing you want to look at, you can do a lot of things, but look at, I, I like to think of um, uh, the person's body build. You know, look, look at their physique. Is, that, is it a uh, healthy looking physique? Is this someone who's in the gym every day? Uh, is it a, uh, uh, you know, whatever. If it tells you anything, fine. If not, fine. Are you okay with me? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm not looking at you because I'm going to pretend I'm new at this, so then I can quickly scan. Okay? Okay. Uh, all right. Now, another thing I, I pay attention to all the time I can is the person uh, look like they're uptight? Are they, are they relaxed? Uh, you know, how are they holding their body? You know, I look at the posture, how are they sitting? Are they sitting upright, nice and, and good? Are they slouched? Uh, <laughs> are they uh, lackadaisical? You get a lot of information from that. Anything that describes how you describe their body type and uh, their, their, how they hold themselves, how uh, they cross their legs or don't cross their legs. And, um, okay, and I, I get some, you got things from me too, right? And unfortunately, I'm not sitting, uh, so you can, but uh, for you, you, you have an easy time or a hard time with me. I'm not sure which way it's gonna work. Uh, okay, now, there are a few other things you can look at, uh, think about. I look at the hands sometimes and what they're doing with their hands. Are, they, uh, are their hands relaxed or are they fiddling? Are they doing something? Is the person generally fidgety? Are they at ease? You know, that kind of stuff. Now, we could go on. There are other things you can look at and do, but I think this is enough for now, for our purposes, okay? Now, what I want you to do, uh, I'm going to just pick up uh, uh, this pair right here, the sitting here, you two guys, okay? Why, why don't you just stand up in front here, come up here. In fact, maybe if, oh, why don't you come up here and sit to, so, so you can have the mic, okay? I want, I want everyone to hear you, okay? Okay, you're, you're? My name is Jay. Jay, Jay, right here with a J sound. Oh, yes. boy. <laughs> okay, and your name is? Tyler. Tyler? Yeah. Okay, Tyler. Now, is that mic on? Let's see, Ty, Ty, can you? Hello. Yeah. Is it on? Check, check. Okay. Uh, talking, okay, uh, Tyler, why don't you give Jay a reading now, just from what you picked up. He, tell him about himself and uh, what kind of a person he is and uh, go on, just try to do whatever you can. Um, you look to be a fairly outgoing person, but uh, you're here to relax. Can everyone hear Have him, by the way? Time. Okay. Yeah. Um, you seem to spend some time outdoors, but you're not afraid to relax inside and just hang out. Um, your shoes untied. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all I got, really. How the, how's that? How's it done, sir? Uh, my shoe isn't, in, in fact, untied. On a scale of zero to uh, hundred, uh, how would you rate the accuracy of it? I, I think you're dead on. What's that? Dead on so far. Dead on. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, well, why don't you give Tyler a reading? Tell him about himself. Uh, Tyler, um, what I see is that uh, you're uh, a nonconformist, but you're extremely comfortable in that role. Uh, you uh, maybe uh, want to look uh, casual and unkempt, but actually you choose very carefully uh, what you wear and how you appear and how you present yourself to people. Uh, I've got a I've got a wild guess that you're from somewhere north. Wildly guess is last name. And and that um, uh, uh, I don't know. I I think you're here because uh, uh, this is a lot more fun than what you normally do, which is maybe skateboarding. <laughs> Very good. How would you how would you rate that? I gotta say that's pretty close. Except I haven't skateboarded in like three years, so. It's it's. But his timing his okay, timing is a little off, that's right? Great. Okay, that's good, great. <laughs> good, good, good job, good job. You both you both now certified. I'm Canada. Actually, you both certified. He's from Canada. Canada. Yeah, I'm. 
north of here. And uh, look, you didn't have to have to have much much technique at all. I didn't no. give you any technique yet. Just to think of where you can go with some technique now. But you've, you've, you're better than most readers out there now. Okay, you did both did a good job. You see. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Are we done? Yeah, you're done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna have one more do it. But then then what we'll do is we're gonna everyone. We'll simultaneously read each other, and then we we'll just get a general rating. We we'll have hands showing, okay? Uh, so, but just one more public one. Uh, uh, okay, right here we got this lady and this gentleman there. Uh -oh. <laughs> Don't be uh oh. You, you, you get it. Yeah. Here we. You can sit here. This is your mic. And this is yours. Now, your name is what? David? 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 I thought so. <laughs> and uh, now I can tell that your name is Helen, right? <laughs> OK. Uh, OK, which one wants to go first? Oh, I'll go first. OK. OK, Helen, I get the impression that you do, you care about your appearance, but you do you also like to be more comfortable. So, uh, let's see. You also seem to have a sense of retro about you, perhaps. And you like, you like things more precise rather than, rather than fuzzy. You're more of a stickler for maybe knowing things precisely. That's about all I'm getting right now. Okay. How's he doing? Okay. <laughs> what's right and what's wrong? I really don't care how I look. <laughs> okay, so I came here and my, you know, I, I, I tried to look a little nice. So maybe See, that's, that's right. Yeah, so he picked that on it. So Normally, that's right. Normally, don't care. Okay. But, but you did care for this. Uh, kind of. Okay. So, and, yeah. and I was picking up. The more recent. Right. Oh, That's right. I, yeah. I, yeah. I don't think Good job. Good job. Good job. You got it. You got it. You got it. I think I was retro. A little bit. Um, your watch. Digital. Uh, Precision rather than analog. Oh, oh, okay. I, and I do, like thing, I do like to know things See. precisely. Okay, so, so by, the, by the way, notice what's happening here. If you continue on, you know, you're never going to be wrong ultimately. You, you, you can push and push, as long as, unless you really be a troublemaker, of course. Uh, she can, you can fit it, you know, and fit it. And he's doing a good, good job of, of correcting. And this is something you could do all the time. You know, he changed the time limits to fit what he now knows. And she's also now becoming more accommodating. She was first being a little reluctant, but now she's helping out. And so this is makes, these are other ways you're going to refine your, your, your uh, reading and also other ways you know you can win. You have a win-win situation basically all the time. You, know, you can't lose if you use the right kinds of techniques. Another technique is what we call metaphor. In other words, uh, a, a go from, also go from literal to uh, a metaphoric, okay? Uh, so one time I was getting a reading from a, a spiritualist medium and she kept pointing to saying, you're, I see you in your garden and you're, you're on your hands and knees and you're pruning the plants and stuff like that. And I says, and she, I, says I don't like gardening. She asked me if that was right. And I said, no, I don't like gardening. I never garden. And she says, what do you do? I said, I'm a professor. She says, that's what I was talking about. This is, your, <laughs> this is metaphorical. These, the plants are your students. And you are the professor, and you're cultivating them, helping oh, them to grow. Oh, poetic. <laughs> but you were dead on about comfort. OK, see, so now she's finding got dead on things. And if she was, this was a person looking to be cooperative, she would be finding the things that he's dead on on, and gradually the other things would fade into the background. OK, it's your turn. Well, what I have noticed <laughs> about you, um, There's, a, there's this aura about you of professionalism, and you are very comfortable in your skin. 
and I love your eyes because they have such depth that, no, seriously, he has beautiful eyes, and I think you take in just everything that you see. I think you're a professional. <laughs> You're a professional person. You like to travel and meet people. And you have a great deal of confidence. And I'm not going to give you the, oh, sometimes you're confident and sometimes you're not. I think you're very confident. End wow. of story on that. <laughs> you're just dead on. <laughs> he knows he has beautiful eyes. <laughs> How would you rate that? That's phenomenal. Okay, Absolutely good. phenomenal. <laughs> Are you pulling your leg? Or? No. Good. Okay, Tell me good. about my love life. <laughs> <laughs> You're very confident. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, both, both of you did a fantastic job. Thank you for helping out. <laughs> Watch your step going down. Here. Okay, now. What we're going to do, uh, and uh, the, the, I'm going to, uh, all the partners uh, give each other a reading like you saw, just uh, we'll all do it together, and, and that will be it f for this exercise, then we'll go on, okay? Did, just take a few minutes to do that. Okay, you give me a reading. Okay. I don't want to cut you short, but, because I know some are getting fantastic, look, some still going, wow. Wow, we. These are all natural born readers here, or good talkers. They're still going. Those two are going still. Wow. <laughs> okay, what I want to do now is I, I know. I'm sorry to have interrupted because I didn't realize, I know some people have so, some people had some very long, a lot to say about each other. <laughs> just a lot. But what I want you to do now is just in your own mind, just, just to, as, as a check, I want you to think on a scale from zero to 100. Rate how accurate you thought your partner gave you, your, your thing is. Now rate it and then I just want to take a show of hands and we'll get some sort of a... What were we rating it on? I forgot already. How accurate... <laughs> I'm sorry. How accurate the reading was you got from your partner, okay? Zero to 100, is that the scale? Yeah. On a scale from zero to 100. Thank you. Okay, you know, if you thought it was pretty good and that it was fairly accurate, 85, 90, you know, not so hot, maybe 50, 25, lousy as can be, everything wrong, zero, okay? <laughs> I've never had a, heard of a zero yet, but it can happen. Uh, we've got a lot of people. Oh, well, 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 that's only one thing wrong. Look, all the things were... It was one thing he got so right. Oh, that was, it was a tremendous hit. Okay, that's a good question. I think that's very important. Uh, by the way, it's a good thing to have for a reader because you're going to find that if you hit on something that's very powerful, that one thing will override everything else. Uh, I had a... Um, uh, I'm not sure I give it in my manual. I may have said that. I forget all the things I put in the manual. But uh, many years ago, there was a magazine, there still is one, called the Eugene Magazine. I come from Eugene, Oregon. And um, this reporter for the Eugene, Oregon, the journalist, had this idea. He was going to go around to all the psychics in Eugene and get a reading from them and somehow or other evaluate how good they are, whether they have any powers from that. But he first came to me, saw me, and... I explained to him about cold reading and everything else and why people believe it even so. And he seemed to understand everything. He's a very sharp guy. Then he went around and he went to all these readers. And he came to me afterwards and he said, you know, every reader I went to, the palm reader, astrologer and so on, everyone I went to, uh, I could see through. You know, some of them were pretty good, but I could see through it and everything you told me fit. And so I could realize that they were just, you know, they, there was no, nothing really psychic about it, except the last one. This is a lady, 
what first impressed him was that this lady um, was not his typical reader. Many of the readers were middle or lower class. Uh, we didn't have any gypsies in Eugene at that time. But um, this lady lived in a very wealthy house, home, in the best part of Eugene. Uh, she always was well-to-do, a lot of jewelry. And she didn't have to do this for a living. So that pressed him in the first place. This was a different persecution than the upper class. And uh, he said, honestly, that everything she was saying was so boring and, and, and useless that he began, his mind began wandering. Cause, and he was worried about, thinking about this relationship problem he had with his girlfriend. So he was having a serious problem with his girlfriend. He was very concerned about it. So his mind was wandering and suddenly he heard her saying, and I see you have this problem with her relationship. <laughs> Just at the time that he was thinking of the problem, you know, and that hit him with a wham. He said, he says in the article, it hit him with such a thud, he knew she was talking about his relationship, that particular relationship with his girlfriend, the, the same very problem. And I says, is that all? She didn't say, do you go into more detail? He says, no, but that was it. I knew it was, because I was feeling it, and there she was talking about it. And I says, that's the whole basis of it? And she says, yeah. From that, his whole article was that everything was as Professor Hyman said it would be except this one woman. And there's no question about it, she had to have something special. <laughs> so, by the way, so one powerful thing can be a very important thing in a reading. So I would give it a lot of weight, okay? But it's up to you, it's your choice. Okay, now everyone, Let's take a show of hands. Do I have some people help me count? We'll tally them. We'll do a rough tally, but uh, you help me good. Someone knows how to count. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that you are a person that's good with figures and administrator. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're going to help me. Which side of the room? Since you're standing up here, I'll go over you down there. Okay, okay. You want me to move sheer size of the room? Okay. Okay, so now everyone uh, who whose rating was from 90, between 90 and 100, raise your hands. Okay, I got yeah. roughly, it, 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 it's roughly, but uh, I get uh, 18 of, okay, so that's 29 I would put there, okay? Now let's go, anyone, anyone between 70 and 79, and I'm sorry, 80 and 89, okay? I get 28, so 28 and 25 is 53, right? Okay, so now let's go 70 to 79. I think I get at least 15 over here. So you get nine? 24, okay. Uh, we got 53 there. Okay. Uh, now, okay, so we got 60 to 69. Holy <laughs> Six, okay, that's about 13. Okay. Anything, uh, well, let's go, we'll just go 50, and then, then we'll take anything that's below that. 50 to 59. 50 to 59. Four, so that's seven, okay. Anything below 50? Let me go here. You get three. Uh, I get zero. Okay, so stretch three. One, I'm sorry. So it's four, total of four. Okay, so it's overwhelmingly uh, 
80 plus, okay? Uh, it's, we get about 82 people who are uh, above 80, and then the rest, let's see, 24 and 13 is 37, and 7 is 41, 45. Uh, no, it's, it, it's pretty clear that it's overwhelmingly uh, uh, over 80, and um, it, so it's pretty high. In fact, it's usually a little bit higher. On the average, in the past workshops, I'd say roughly about 85% if you average it out. And this is a little higher, but that's about the same. So that's pretty good. You did, all did a great job. But Alan, Alan, what was your rating? What, uh, I, I rated uh, Susan uh, 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 59 to 60. Okay, and so that was somewhat lower than 85, but it's still really fairly good. But he's a unique person, remember? We started out that way. So he's different from everyone. So it was hard to read him. So to get 59%, that's pretty good. You did a good job. And it's the first try. Is that? First try, right. How many was it the first reading you did? OK. So overwhelmingly, you're all on your way. You all, all can do a good reading. <laughs> Let me uh, just give you just a few hints. And you, if you look at the thing, you can add some. Uh, how are you going to make that reading? But you see, just with the information you got, you're going to be able to give a great reading. But what you now can do with that, before you deliver it, uh, before you do the reading, there's a lot of things you can do that uh, will make the reading itself better. In fact, I often think that the most important part of a reading is what you do before the reading. Now, you had no time to do that. But if you're going to give someone a reading, uh, remember this, that even if they have been to other kinds of psychics and stuff like that, they're coming to you, they're not sure how they're supposed to behave in your realm, you know. This gives you the opportunity to define the situation. This is your turf they're coming into, and you let them know it. Now, if they're coming to, into your home, you have a private office, that, that's clearly their, your turf. But if you're on TV, or, or it's in a public center, or, or not in your home, you still can let them know it's your turf by the sense that you tell them how you work. Now, even when I'm doing readings on TV, uh, palm readings, for example, I they sit down, they sit the person in front of me, at least I do a little bit of this, I'd say, look, have you ever had a reading before? By the way, this chit-chat is also helpful. To know if they have had a reading before or not is important. If they've had a reading before, it tells you that there are some people who are looking for information, and so that, that's a leg up for you. If they have never had a reading before, that's okay too, in the sense that this, you can say, well, don't worry, this is harmless. Okay? And then it gives you a chance to explain the rules of what's going to go on, what wants, and so that. All this is doing is it's saying, look, now you've left your world, you're in my world, and these are the rules of how you behave in my world, okay? I'm in command here. Now, another thing I'd let them know also, you know, I've done this a lot before I tell them, just to let them know that I'm experienced. They're not experienced because they're new to them, I will, right? Uh, I'm experienced, and I let them know I've been pretty successful at it. But then I let them know it takes two to tango. You know, it's like uh, I have half of a lottery ticket and you have the other half. My half is useless without your half and your half is useless without mine. So we're going to talk about you. We're talking about you. And that's the other nice thing about doing a reading. This is that person. This is your life we're talking about. We're dealing with you during that period of time. And uh, a lot of things, I have half the ticket, a lot of things are going to come to me as a psychic. They come to me, I'm going to find out, have things about you, but I won't understand them completely. You're going to have to make them fit. And so you're going to understand them. Which means that you're making them do the work. Also, you've placed the onus of failure on them. Now, unless they were a troublemaker, uh, or like one of those guys on TV, uh, they're going to cooperate. They're going to find a way of fits. Found, even that worst guy I had there, you saw that third guy, I said was into, at the end, he said, yeah, well, he did say things that were true. Yeah. So um, uh, that they're going to cooperate anyways. So this is what I call setting the stage. You know, before you even get into it, a little chit-chat, a little defining the situation, and a little getting across that you know, it takes, they got to cooperate, okay? 
And uh, so that's that, uh, a little bit of that. I give you more rules about how to do that. Uh, will make your reading even much stronger. So the same thing where, on the average, people are getting high ratings already for their readings. You get it even higher. Okay. Now, what do you do during the reading? Well, during the reading, it's good to put what you're getting into a script. You notice that um, Christian Dion. Every script. By the way, I give you a complete. Uh, uh, transcript of his script, and then what I was doing when I was on the radio in Buffalo, I give you a complete transcript of, of the, my first reading, on, on it, which is in, in there. Uh, I was doing a couple of things. What he does, Christian, when, he, when someone, he first gets someone to call, he, he, throw, he throws out, casts what I call a wide net. He says, now, I get the impression that you are someone close to you. I've widened the net, okay? I've widened the net. Okay. Uh, is having, or maybe is about to have, <laughs> a hard time with something. And then with, with what, something, what? Well, you rotate. There are only, uh, as most readers know, there are only a few categories that people are going to be interested in. The romance, uh, monetary or financial matters of some sort, health fitness matters, um, minor ones of travel, uh, relationships, of course, is a very important one. Uh, and that part of romance, too, of course. So that I gave you a list, listen, there aren't too many categories of better people. Ideally, if it's going to be a short reading, you want to, well, here's how you can use that information. You don't know ahead of time what they're concerned about, the major concern. Uh, so what happens is I, I, this is going to be, I always say it's a short reading anyways. When I've gone into reading a little bit, I say, now look, we don't have much more time. Uh, so well, if I'm doing a palm reading, I say, well, here is, this finger is your finger of Mercury, which has to do with finance and fin financial matters and money. This is your finger of uh, Saturn, which has to do with uh, arts and uh, artistic matters. This is the finger of um, Jupiter, has to do with ambition. This is your... Heart line has to do with uh, affairs of the real heart, but also has to do with romantic things. This is your headline, has to do with things about uh, thinking and, and problems you may have. Uh, and this is your lifeline, which has to do with the quality of your, of your health and stuff like that. I, so I give them, what I'm doing, I say, now look, we have a short period of time, what would you like me to concentrate on? That gives you a lot of information, tells you what problem, then you can go from there. Another way of doing this is saying, okay, is there anything we have left out that, that you want? Do you have any questions? So this is how you can get more into, get them to give you, telling you what their real problems are, what their really concerns are. Okay, so you cast this wide net. You can do it several ways. By the way, when I say I'm, I'm throwing this question, uh, you know, uh, I get the impression that in the last, could be the last six months or the last several months, Things you've had, things haven't been going as well as they could have, uh, or either for you or someone close to you. Okay, uh, and in then then you can rotate. You can with one client you can say, okay, in matters of I get monetary matters. I'd like the favorite one that he's good at, property matters. With Yvonne, you know, he said property matters. Now, property matters could be anything, uh, uh, a book, uh, property, your car, your, uh, like someone left their um, iPad in the men's room the other day, that's property, right? That would be a property matter problem, uh, and so on. So property can mean anything. So when Yvonne, remember Yvonne, who I went, we got permission to, so we called her house, you know, she got, was one of the callers that where I was watching, uh, and I give the whole transcript that he gave to Yvonne. Uh, you saw part of it. With this Vaughn, uh, I went to her house in East London, West London, I guess. We, we wrote to her house, and I went in and interviewed her, and you saw what she said. It was great. She thought he was right on, you know, basically, right? And she said, uh, and I said, why? And she said, well, he, I love this one. She said, he said, I lost my sparkle. <laughs> and that, that, that was, so look what she's picking on, very little and the other thing she mentioned, and I pushed her some more, she said, I lost my sparkle, and she said, he said something about, what's one other thing? She said, do you, do you remember 
you find it there, okay. But then, the, then she said something out. Then she went on and said, then I pushed a little bit more, and she finally said, oh, yeah, and then the property matter. It turned out they had talked in the past about maybe selling their house, okay. So that was enough to make a big hit, and she, she was willing to say that he was right on, okay. Um, but anyway, so you could begin with casting a wide net, and you could rotate, change or try out different areas to find out what area is most concerned to them. And now, the script is that he's using, he started all with casting the net, the script is you try to put things into the past. If they have a problem now, today, what led up to the problem? Things in the past. So you can talk about the past and people who might have been there and leading up to what your current situation is. Then, given the current situation, then you could talk about Typically, he talks about the next year, a short period of time, kind of, the near future. And then you go to the far future. And that's your whole read, but you take what you've gotten from your scan, put that into that thing, and you've got a better, nice story. And people like stories, okay? So that will enhance your reading even more. Then there are other things you can do. At some point, you can say, uh, you can say, throw something out and say, does this make sense? It's kind of forcing him to say something. I try and do that early in the reading, by the way, because the other thing I've learned in doing readings that go more than 10 and 12 minutes is that if early in the reading, I can get them talking by saying, does this make sense? Um, uh, or is there something I've left out? If they start to open their mouths, you shut up and listen. The worst thing you do is talk. If they begin want to talk, you listen. This is the one most wonderful thing that can happen. And it's hard for readers to, to sit down, just listen. But listen to them. And they love to talk because he's got something to talk to. Most, most in the real world, probably no one wants to listen to them. Um, so listen. You pick up a lot of information, and then you repackage it, what I call it, and you feed it back to them later on in the reading as you're summarizing stuff up. They're going to give you credit for knowing an awful lot of specific things. Um, and this is a good trick. So there are little tricks I give you there, but just those few things will take what you already can do now and do very well and raise it to a, a super level. Okay, now I just want to, uh, I want to let you go soon, but um, I want to uh, mention a little bit about the uh, people who do the, like that John Edward you saw a little bit of, uh, the people who talk to the dead, okay? Uh, now, the dead, as far as we know, don't talk back, but um, the, um, they claim they're listening. Now, this George Anderson had the, the formula, which they all, in some ways, if you, the, the followers of him, uh, John Edward, Ben Prague, who is a, you know, just the worst of all, and uh, Rosemary Altea, and uh, Sylvia Brown, uh, by the way, I wish I brought it with me. I was talk we're talking about, you saw that little thing when they did that scan they did on Sylvia Brown, right? Well, uh, in 18, uh, 18, <laughs> 1989, <laughs> in 1989, uh, there was a program, a two-hour program called Testing Psychics Live, okay? And um, it was, I think Randy hoped it might be a, a pilot for a possible series. The premise of the program was that psychics would challenge Randy, and I was the person who, who then would arrange work with those psychics who challenged Randy, Randy to work out a way we could do a test live on television, which is a tricky business because you've got to do a test that they're, they're satisfied with, that they're willing to think is fair, and um, that could be done within the confines of a television show. Uh, the premise was, and, they, and if they could pass the test, they would get $100,000. And for this first pilot show, 1989, we had a two-hour special. Bill Bixby was the um, moderator. And uh, we had Uri Geller on there, ultimately, and we had uh, Sylvia Brown on there. They weren't challenging. They weren't contestants. They were there just to be on the program. So the producers felt that would give it some more interest. And, um, and then there were five contestants. There was an uh, astrologer, an uh, aura reader, a card reader, a dowser, 
and one other uh, type of thing, I forget which, and I had to arrange ahead of time to, to put them to see whether they were willing to work on these conditions. I gave them a, a, a free run ahead of time. We tried it out without too many constraints to make sure they felt comfortable in the situation. And then we ran them live on the, on the show. Live meant that at the time we first broadcast it, it was live. Then it was afterwards it was um, uh, shown. The tape version, of course, was shown to other people. But we did it. We were working live. Well, Celia Brown was on the show. It's the first time I met her. And just, just the year before she was uh, made a felon, <laughs> she and her husband got caught in the business of, she was advising her clients what stocks to buy, which was a, a something, a, a, what's that? What's that? We're just shocked. Okay, you're just shocked. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it was the whole thing was a scam, and so that's how why she was a felon, a convicted felon. But anyways, when she was on the show, I don't know she, she at that time she was considered the top paid psychic in the United States, and I think at that time she would give you could call her on a telephone, get a reading for about a half hour for seven hundred and fifty dollars, I think it was something like that. So they wanted to parade, so she did her thing. She got up in the audience, we had people in the audience, and she picked a person out and she started giving him a reading and everything she said, he said no. Absolutely no to everything. It turned out to be, he was an engineer from visiting. Uh, New, uh, we were in shooting in Los Angeles. He was visiting from uh, Czechoslovakia, someplace like that. He was an engineer. And she got him wrong in everything and he just said no to everything. And just a, so I wish I had that to show you because there's Sylvia Brown, 100% wrong. <laughs> uh, you'll do much better than Sylvia Brown, believe How me. How did she recover from, uh, during the reading when she was missing everything? How, how did she recover? She tried to, but, but it was very embarrassing. It was tough, tough to recover from. Uh, but she was very upset. And I was backstage with her, and she was saying that that must have been a plant. She thought it was deliberately planted to embarrass her. And I said, no, no, you did a good job of embarrassing yourself without the plan. We didn't <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes? When, you, when a person does a reading, the person that comes to you, do they expect you to tell their fortune or tell them what's going to happen? Like if I'm reading her and saying, you're, right. going, you're going eventually uh, to become some kind of conclusion. Good question. You're going to find happiness in somewhere else. Okay, okay. Uh, both, you could do either one, you could focus on, on that. Uh, usually, uh, if they're coming to you from a real reading, you know, the, the, there's most, most people you probably be reading if you're trying it out, are people who aren't, don't have a specific problem. But most people coming to you have a real problem. And that, that means you've got to be very careful here. So, uh, uh, by the way, be careful what you tell them, too. That's a very important thing. I give you some examples of uh, from, there's a Dear Abby column from many years ago, and I give you that in the annotated bibliography and describe it. Uh, someone wrote a letter to her saying that, you know, I'm 65 years old and stuff like that, but when I was 20 or something, a gypsy fortune teller told, looked at my lifeline and said, it's short and you're going to be dead within 10 years. She said, I was worried about that my whole life. Now I am 65 and stuff like that. And then as a result of that column, a lot of other people wrote into her ha having similar experiences, and I put that in there. You, you, I, I, I quote all those things here. The point is, you've got to be very careful. Even if you're doing this at a party for fun, people take it seriously. So be careful what you tell them. Now, about the future. Well, he tells them always that, that well, the next few months, you'll see things begin to look up. And then in 10 years, he varies the time, things are going to get better. Uh, and sometimes he says, uh, if you get off your butt or something like that, what I do, I focus on, I tell you to do that, I always focus on never tell them what the future is going to be, tell them about their potentials. You have a potential for maybe doing great, a good writing and stuff like that, but only if you, you know, get off your ass and put your nose to the wheel or something like that, right? So you do that. The other thing I suggest you do tell him about the future, but also give him some good advice. This is your opportunity to let him know that they should eat more lettuce, okay? Everyone needs to eat more lettuce. A lot of green is good for you. And a lot more berries, because that has you know, the right kinds of things like that. And they should eat more berries, more fruit, 
uh, and whole, wheat, whole grains only, you know, that kind of stuff. And that can't hurt. And also, move. Don't sit down too long at any time. By the way, I, sh I should have gotten you people to stand up and do some stretching and stuff like that. Uh, so to, to give them, do good. This is a chance to give, you know, don't, don't push them or anything, but, but give them a little bit of good advice. That, that's, that's, that's sound. Go read the New York Times on health column, you know, the, go to the section on health. You get a little good advice. And I use that a lot. And I, I think, so, so do good. Okay. The name else? Yeah. What if you're not reading a stranger where you may have some biases as the reader? You may have some biases as the reader. You're not meeting a stranger? If you're reading an acquaintance. Acquaintance. That's the hard thing to read an acquaintance, by the way. Uh, you know, in one sense, you could practice on acquaintances, but it's, it's bad because you're right. You, you already know too much and it's going to color how you read it. So it's unfortunate, but you shouldn't, you should, uh, uh, well, I, I used to practice for myself. Uh, I would go to malls and stuff like that. I just walk in, I, you know, I'm not getting any feedback from these people, but I'd look as people go by me, I say, by the way, when I'm in the San Francisco airport, every time I like to eat at this Yankee Pier, and you can see people coming in and out and walking back, and San Francisco people somehow are the most interesting people. I tell myself stories about what this lady must be like, what she's doing, why she's going, where she's traveling, and how she's dressed, you know. And I, and I, I practice that, so I do that all the time when I'm seeing that. So that in itself is good practice. Then, unfortunately, working with people you know, acquaintances, it's, it's problematic. I'm not sure that's a good way of even practicing. It's a good question. Uh, now, uh, yes? Well, you heard, no, I have not. I haven't heard if that's true or not. She brought up two issues, if you haven't heard. One issue was she heard that as a punitive way, because the pe person, the client isn't cooperating with them, they tell them they only have 10 years to live because it's, they're punishing them for not having cooperating. Uh, by the way, if someone really is not cooperating with you, get rid of them. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's a waste of your time and their time. Uh, when I was doing it for, for money, you know, living, uh, if someone, I could tell right away that these people are in it for either a game or something like that, I would, I'd be polite about it, but I'd, get, I'd make my reading as short as good and get them out of there, because I want to deal with real clients. That was when I thought I was doing good or something like that. Uh, the second question, though, uh, that you brought up is, is very interesting, is, um, uh, say it again, what was the second part? Okay, yes. Now, now you get into what the difference between a cold reading and a hot reading. A cold reading came about, by the way, the term only came into existence around, um, I, I give you something, I, I mentioned that a little bit. The term came into existence, best I can tell, Max Maven, who he and I tried to collaborate and find out when the first use of the term cold reading came to describe what a psychic does when they meet a person they never met before, okay? Um, so the cold reading comes from uh, auditioning in, in the theater. When people come to uh, audition, they usually give them a script and have them read it cold. If you look up cold reading on the web, uh, uh, you will find that you get a choice of cold reading for psychics or cold reading for theater. And most of it has to do with cold reading for theater. Uh, but the idea of the cold reading is that you see a person you never have any background on, you don't have any previous information on them. That's really, so you see them cold, and as we, after you've talked with them for a while, you've convinced them you know everything about them, okay? That's the cold reading. And that's, the, that's at its best. What you're talking about is what's called a heart reading sometimes. You get prior information on them. And there are, uh, the spiritual readers used to have what's called a blue book. That's what I mean. Yeah. And uh, they, when you went to one medium in Chicago, for example, if you'd been to mediums in some other part of the country, they have the information on you in the blue book, they call it. They used to, now that you're on the web. And so they, they can quickly know who you are. Now, then they can look up and say, well, she lost her father and such and such. And she always, when she goes to a seance here in, in New Jersey, she's always uh, looking for her lost kitten and stuff like that. 
And now you know that. Yeah, now you're in Cincinnati or someplace like that. They know that. That's, that's called the Blue Book. Yeah. So that's, you confirmed that to me. Yeah. I have one more question that I forgot. Um, people like uh, Sylvia Brown and stuff, I've often noticed that when they are, do bomb on a reading, they're very angry and they uh, sort of like they're yeah. yelling all sorts of things. Is that what you say? Yeah, uh, yeah, also, yeah, uh, they, they, they are blaming the victim, you might say. Uh, now, I'm telling you to do the stimulus thing, you know. Uh, if you look at Ed Mark, uh, ever watch, and I give you a full, long transcript of, of John Edward. I had some of that on DVD, but and we won't have time to play that. But fortunately, there's a long transcript of John Edward. You see what he's doing. What Edward does, and this guy who, who put that on, I took it from a blogger's uh, website. He does have some good insights on this. He gives you the, the transcript, uh, and uh, in between, he, he makes his comments about that. He also summarizes the, the rules to do what he, Edward is doing. But Edward is uh, even more crude than Anderson. He just throws out, he kills, I get a, a name, a first name with J, or uh, with a J, begins with a J, or J sounding like name. <laughs> and he goes, and then, then uh, if the person makes connection, okay, they, uh, he says, now, is it over there or over here? So he's finding out which way it is. And, uh, but then he also clearly says things that the person doesn't understand or doesn't accept. And he says, well, you mark it, you know, because he says the spirits are never wrong. You make a note of that and you come up uh, later on, you might find out that's true. You understand it. You don't understand it now, but you do it. So that's the one thing, but, but other readers also use this technique. It's, it's another way of protecting yourself is uh, saying when it seems that something you say is clearly wrong. You say, well, uh, that's strange. Uh, you know, it can't be wrong. Something must be right there. There's some way it must, must be right. Oftentimes you find the people who are going to work with you to make it right. You know, they'll find some way of reinterpreting it. But the other way you put it is you change it in time Okay, there's other things you can do. You can change it in time. You say, well, that's, maybe it's going to happen in the future. Maybe I was wrong in my timing. Like, she did it for me, this gal. She said, well, he was a little bit off in his timing, remember? Uh, so they'll do it for you sometimes. Uh, so you can change it. There are other ways, like I told you about the uh, spiritualist medium who, who told me, that when, he, when I said I don't like gardening, she said, well, this is metaphorically, meant to be metaphorically. So you can do that. You can, so you've got a lot of ways of not, not losing. But the most important way you can do is say, well, you think about it. And you'll see that it's that, that is right. That's very important. Uh, so ultimately, if you, if you get comfortable with this, you'll never be wrong. There's no way. I could have, if, if, if Shirley up there with those two other guys who weren't quite agreeing with me, if I were interviewing, she was doing the interviewing there, and it kind of was short, but I had several ways. I was already ready to, to, to make sure that was going to work. And I just needed a few more sentences, but, but it was okay anyways. They, they still found some way of finding something good about what I said. Yes, any other? Yeah. It sounds like that blue book is the original psychic network then. Yes, okay, you're right. But that, that goes, by the way, if you want to read something about that, there was this book, and it was republished by um, Prometheus Books, by... Um, uh, what's that? Lamar Keen. Lamar Keen, yes. I have the, I wrote the forward to that book, uh, the second edition. Lamar Keene was a uh, relatively recent, I think maybe 20 years or 30 years ago he wrote this book. He was a spiritualist medium and he had a big spiritualist church with a partner in Florida. And they did good business. They used uh, the equivalent of the blue books and he had all that stuff. And he, uh, for whatever reason, uh, oh, he got this lady, a very wealthy lady, one of his clients, to adopt him. So he get, now he gets all that, inherited all that money. And he claims as a result of that adoption, she's so nice and he felt so good, you know, he made him feel nice. He felt guilty about all he had, the whole life he'd done in the past. And so now he, he left his church, he gave up that thing, and he exposes everything, you know, all this stuff and all the other, he names names of other people as well that involved. So he had to go undercover. He disappeared. And I don't know whether he was killed or what, but when we wanted to do the second edition, Prometheus Books wanted to publish the second edition of his, of the, we, no one can find him. And so it's not clear what's happened to him. I've heard rumors that he was finally bumped off by some other mediums who didn't like what he'd done. But the book is called um, Psychic Mafia. Psychic Mafia. 
Yes, I kept mafia by Lamar King. Go on Amazon.com, you can get it, and you'll learn all about those techniques. In our time, actually, this existed. Yes? Um, if someone comes to you and you say, what area would, would you like to focus on? And they say, health. And, and they don't give you anything else. Where do you go from there? OK. Uh, health. <laughs> Uh, I'd have to see, uh, looking at the person and stuff like that, you know, I, I could tell a lot of things by looking at them, right? But I would uh, begin concentrating on uh, diet and stuff like that. I, I, did, I have to depend on the circumstance of who I was with and when, when this happened, uh, at what point in the reading, you know. Uh, so I can't tell you exactly what I would do, but it certainly gives me a lot, a lot of information. And then I know, you should, it's good to know these things, if you know the statistics of what proportion of men at certain ages get cancer of the, of the uh, and the most likely cancers they have or the problems with their prostate. Most, most people of a certain age are going to have a prostate problem, right? Half the population, the other half don't. <laughs> uh, and uh, so if you learn some of these things, and by the way, I used to say I don't do this because I don't do this, but get the almanacs and, and get the statistics. There are all kinds of sources now on the web and stuff like that. We get what proportion of the population does this and this and this and this. And those are good things. So I would try what I call population stereotypes. I would start with the most likely thing for a person of that age, that gender, what the most likely illnesses they may have. Then you could probe a little bit and very quickly you can zero in on most things. Yes. You know, or about your family, about your finances. I can find out what, where you live, what your mortgage is, and I can find out so much. What do you think that's going to do to the future of cold reading? Is that going to cold it? Well, it, uh, even a cold reader would like to take advantage of it. Now, if you go to many psychics, Sylvia Brown, so like that, it, you, you find that they have what they call a waiting list, sometimes a year and a half to get a reading with them. Well. It's not that they, they probably do have a long waiting list, but not that long. They're using that to, to see if they can, meantime, do a lot of research and get a lot of prior information on you. So the long waiting, you know, the waiting, if you try to get a reading with John Edward, it's going to be very costly, but also I think you now may have to wait a year or two. But meanwhile, that gives them a lot of time to, get, to try to get a lot of the extra information on you. They don't need it, but uh, it helps. Now, Harriet's here, and when uh, you asked about health, I should be very careful. I actually would, would tell you to stick, stay clear of health issues, right? I would agree with that, because you can kind of worry in someone's mind if you mention something that they don't have. Okay, what, what Harriet's saying, you could, you could put a worry in there and, and get and they, something they may not have, and that, that actually can happen. So I would try and steer clear of things like health. Uh, actually, I, I suggest that you try and find other things to talk about. But if they're going to talk about health, you, 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 you can, uh, I would, my own devices, I, I tell them to get, you know, they don't have their annual, when's the last time they had their annual physical, their annual checkup? They ought to do that now, you know, maybe, stuff like that. But uh, I would not try to get into the health issue as such. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of other things here can be very tricky too. So uh, my last words to you are, be careful what you say. And the um, uh, reason I, uh, you're learning this is I didn't, we didn't have time to get too much into this, and, but it's, hopefully it's all in the manual, is that really what I want you to realize that you can see already, that it's very powerful. And anyone just with a little, just what you did. By the way, you're much better off than many of the psychics out there don't even uh, know how to use clues from other people. Um, that it works. It's pretty powerful. And there is a room of skeptics people who it shouldn't work on, the skeptics, right? But, but it still worked. So this is very powerful. And what I want you to learn is how this is powerful and that people are taken in by it. We all are. And it's not because we're stupid. In fact, if people are not, don't, don't have a certain amount of intelligence, you're not going to give them a good reading because they're not going to be able to use their imagination to help you along. Um, so the, what... What, you, what I want you to learn is that 
the reason that cold reading works, just like many other scams and stuff work, is because for the most of the time, we have pr our evolution stuff has created a, a brain and a mind that has, actually works pretty well. We all have, the, most of us have the capacity to, do, to be rational and so on. The problem is that our rational mind takes a lot of effort. We can't use it for everything. So we've got to use it for certain things. And most of the time, we've got to work on autopilot. And again, most of the time, the autopilot works well, too. But if someone knows that, intuitively or otherwise, they can take advantage of it. Now, this is paradoxical, but if you think about it, the fact that cold reading works and people can take advantage of you in conference games and other things like that means that, for the most part, society is functioning well. I'm thinking, of, for example, extreme totalitarian societies like East Germany used to be, from what I understand, where parents could turn in their children, their children turning in their parents. That society is non-functional. It's, it's broken down. But under, those, under that East German totalitarian regime, con uh, cold readers wouldn't be able to function either. People wouldn't trust them. And uh, con men can't function either. So you have less conference, and the word skeptical, there's no re, re, even if it could function, the skeptical movement would be useless in such a society, because no one can take it, but the society is useless. The very fact that we can see all these people being taken in and stuff like that means that for the most part people aren't being taken in, and that for the most part society functions well. So the paradox is the fact that cold reading works, and works on smart people, suggests that for the most part people are smart enough and society is working well, except for our political system, okay? <laughs> and now, now I think, uh, uh, I want to, I think it's about time to bring it, bring it to a close, unless you have one last question or something. Yes? If you are being cold read, you know, by somebody, how do you, what's the best way of controlling the situation? If, if you, you want to do cold reading? If you are being cold read, you know, like, you end up somewhere. Oh, someone's calling you reading you? Yeah, how do you, what's the oh. best way well, now, someone raised the question of Ewan Rowland's book on facts of cold reading. He spent some time, that's the only book I know it does that, he spent some time how to block a cold reader from reading you. Okay. Now, why do you want to block it, though, by Let me know. What, what purpose do you have? Well, not block it, potentially misdirect it. I don't know. Be a troublemaker. It's a scam. <laughs> <laughs> it's a scam. It's a scam. It's a scam. Well, well, you know, you know uh, it'd be fascinating because I, I know this happened with uh, some psychiatrists. Um, I remember uh, at a convention, a psychology convention, but we had a couple of psychiatrists there too. And uh, this many, many years ago. And this psychiatrist said uh, to his friend, they were waiting on the elevator, uh, that uh, he has a patient he wants him to meet. And he brought him to this convention. He also told this guy he's going to show as a patient to, the, to let's say A, he tells that I have a patient I want you to meet. He told the guy B, he says, he said, told him the same story, I'm going to introduce you to a patient. So now he introduces the two psychiatrists <laughs> to each other, each thinking that the other is a like schizophrenic of some sort, something like that. And they talked to each other and they ended up believing it that the other guy is a schizophrenic. <laughs> Well, I'm thinking of putting two cold readers together, trying to read each other. That'd be fascinating to see what happens. <laughs> yes? Uh, in fact, it's the Philadelphia Association for Critical Thinking. We decided to try to turn the tables. And what we did was we had a girl working on a project for high school. And she went to three different psychics who could talk to the dead to find out about her uh, sibling that died at birth when she was about two or three years old. Well, this, this child never existed. This pregnancy never existed. She got three different things. Two of the children were boys, and one said it was a girl. And she got, she got a nice little paper out of it. We got a nice article in our uh, newsletter. But it, it was nice to be able to turn the tables that they didn't realize. They're the psychics and didn't realize they were being scammed. That's good they're not real psychics. <laughs> well, OK, it's almost 7 o'clock. Uh, I think, thank you, okay, <laughs> thank you.